Hey, guy from New Plastic, and more procedural redshift. This time, fully and completely procedural Terrasso materials. First, I created a redshift version of the Octane Terrasso pack with 42 different materials split into two packs. Fully procedural, fully beautiful, extremely customizable. This is one of my favorite packs. I always loved how simple and visually pleasing it is. I also completely upgraded the Octane pack, which has been around for a year or two. So yeah, go buy it if you feel like you need it. It's a great way to support the channel. Another great way to support the channel is buying prints and pins I made on my Pink Eye Gumroad, so check that out as well. Or consider supporting on Patreon or Membership, where you can watch these videos with no ads, get access to these project files, get free products from the store and other cool perks, but mostly help me make more and better content for y'all. Follow me on Instagram at ojang or the channel at Brand New Plastic. Join our Discord, subscribe. Watch the movie Come and See. It's very intense, but it's a really incredibly brilliant and different take on a war film, showing you the effect of wars through the changing face of this kid throughout the movie. Just watch it. Let's go. Okay, so I have this simple vase model here and just a simple indoor HDRI lighting everything from the right. Let's add a standard material and I'll add a color layer node and a maxon noise. Plug the noise into the base layer, turn off layer 1 for now, and let's solo this. Let's scale up the noise, change type to FBM, and I'm going to use this noise for some subtle variation to the background color, so I don't want this noise to be too small. And let's add a ramp node to the noise and give it some color. Again, I just want to add very, very subtle variation to the color, so I want the notches to be almost the same color. Name this node, and let's create the actual terrazzo pattern. So I'll add two maxon noises. Plug the first one to layer 2 color and the second one to layer 2 mask. Turn on layer 2. And let's change the first noises type to cell Voronoi and scale it up. So you can see we're getting all these grayscale values in this cell pattern. You can change the values with contrast and brightness and play with the seed to get a different pattern. And the second noise will change to Voronoi 3. And we want the exact same seed and scale as the previous noise because this way their cell pattern is going to match perfectly. So very important to have the same seed and the same scale. One thing we do want to do is crank the contrast on the second noise way up so we get sharp transitions between the blacks and whites. And playing with the high and low clip will reveal more or less of the chips themselves. And because this Voronoi node is masking the cell node, we're getting only the grayscale pattern on top of our blue background. And now we can use a ramp node on the cell noise and give it some color, painting the color notches we choose here across the grayscale pattern. We can slightly adjust the shape of each cell by playing with the exponent on the Voronoi noise. Upping it will make each cell a bit more clean and minimal, and lowering it will make each cell more rough and jagged. Okay, let's name these nodes, and now we can add all the complementary details to get a much richer look. So I'll add another noise, change type to Voronoi 3, plug it into layer 1 mask, turn on layer 1, and you can see we're getting all this fine noise now in between the cell pieces. Let's plug the original background noise to layer 1 color using a ramp node, and now we can paint these tiny specks in whatever color we want. And it's a bit too much now, so let's up the contrast on this noise. So yeah, we're getting much cleaner results. Nice. Let's see how this actually looks, and it's looking very beautiful. Needs more details though. I'll duplicate this noise, plug it into layer 3 color, turn on layer 3, and use the large Voronoi noise to mask out this layer. So we're only getting this noise inside the main pieces. Let's change the seed so it doesn't match with the background noise, and change blend mode to something like soft light. And now we're getting this beautiful subtle variation to the color, and you can play around with the look, maybe scale it down, up the contrast, and because the blend mode is set to soft light, we can change the noise colors to something more gray, which will make the effect more subtle. So nice. Okay, let's clean up these nodes a bit. Control G to scaffold group all of them together and give it a name and color. And let's add some bump detail now. So I'll add a color layer node and plug the main Voronoi noise to the base layer and plug this to the bump channel using a bump node. So we're just barely bumping up the texture on those main pieces. It's actually barely visible now, but we'll fix it later. Let's also duplicate this noise, plug it into layer one color, turn on layer one, 
then change blend mode to uh, average change seed bring the colors back to black and white maybe crush the low clip a bit more and bring opacity way down and let's see how we're looking yeah beautiful it's a bit too strong now for me but that's really up to you and what surface you're trying to create let's zoom in here and yeah we can bring the opacity way way down like 0 0.03 so this would add this very fine overall roughness and let's plug this original background noise into layer 2 color with the ramp node and really crush the whites so we're left with sparse black specks mm, let's change the seed on the noise maybe something like this change blend mode to multiply so we're getting this occasional chipping Mm, these tiny specs could use a bit more contrast. And okay, I might as well add another noise here and use it for layer 2 just to have more control. Change type to displace Voronoi. Invert low and high clip. And really choke the whites. So we're getting these tiny black crack-like specs. We can spread out the gradient notches now and yeah. We're now getting this extra layer of sparse chipping. Okay, great. Let's move these down, add another color layer. And actually let's scaffold group these, name and color them, and use this color layer for the roughness channel. So I'll plug this noise into the base layer and this one into layer one. Change blend mode to exclusion, lower opacity a bit, and also plug this noise to layer 2 color, change blend mode to subtract, lower opacity, and plug to the roughness channel. And we can add a ramp node to it to remap the values a bit, maybe less contrast overall, but crush the whites a bit to get more sharpness. Cool, we're getting some subtle variation. Okay, let's fix the main chunks not showing on the bump channel. Really all I need to do is to go to the Voronoi noise that is masking out those chunks and slightly reduce the contrast like 0.95 instead of 1. And now you can see the bevel on them. So if you have no transition at all between the blacks and the whites, you won't get any bevel. And now I can add a ramp node to the mask on all the color parts and crank up the contrast here so we still get the sharp color transitions and add a ramp node to the bump channel layer and make the notches more gray to bring the bump down even more. I think the bump is still a bit too strong, so yeah, I ended up with 34.5% to 35% gray, so 0.5% difference in height. It's just barely sticking out, but that's just the style of terrazzo that I'm going for here, like the jasmineite type terrazzo, which is super clean and polished, but you know, feel free to experiment. That's beautiful. Okay, a little bit more detail to wrap it up. I'll add another noise, plug it into layer four color, turn on layer four, Change type to displaced Voronoi and crank up low clip. Bring gain slightly down and crank up octaves. Bring exponent up a bit and lower lacunarity a bit and change blend mode to dodge. So we're just adding these tiny specks that are brightening up the surface and look like tiny residue or something in the material. And we can make them even smaller. And I like the dodge blend because it shifts the hue a bit while brightening up the colors. So it adds a little twist. Okay, sick. And I can get very different looks with this. So I'll duplicate this material and here instead of the grayscale cell noise, I'll use the main background noise for the chips colors and play with the colors on the ramp to get this more of a random marbly effect. And to spice it up even more, I'll plug the main Voronoi noise into the metal nest channel to make the pieces metallic. And even more, I can add a thin film layer the problem is that this way it adds the iridescence across the whole surface and I just want it to be on the main chips. So I'll plug the main chips mask noise into the thickness channel of the thin film using a float range node. 
I'll leave the new range minimum at zero and crank up the new max to 500, which means all the black parts will have zero thin film and all the white parts will have 500 thickness thin film. And now you can see it only applies on the chips. Oh, it's beautiful. Let's change the seeds on the main chips noise, up the high and low clip to make them more sparse, and bring exponent down to add more distortion to them. Maybe scale down a bit. Change the background color. Maybe scale up the tiny specks a bit. Choke them a bit more. And actually, now that I don't need to perfectly match the main chips mask noise to a cell noise, I can experiment with different noise types like displaced Voronoi, which will allow me to have more micro control over the shapes of the chips. So by lowering the octaves and lacunarity, I can make the chips have less detail in the distortion. And actually, let's make the background color something closer to white. Yeah, this is much better. And I can play with the blend mode on that bump noise to get a slightly different look. And actually, I'll duplicate this ramp node and plug the main chips noise through it into layer 1 mask. And if I invert the black and white notches, I'm removing some of this main bump noise from the chips. And I can make the dark notch even darker to remove it even more. Maybe even make the bright notch a bit darker to generally bring down the opacity of this bump. And yeah, looks pretty good. This white layer doesn't need to be turned on. Maybe crank up the opacity on this tiny bump noise. And okay, I came back to this because I wanted to add a couple more details. So first I'll bring the low clip down on this main bump noise, which will make it spread out even more. And I'll lower the bump height so it's not that crazy strong, but up the octaves so it has much more fine detail. That's really nice. And I'll add a ramp node to it and make the blacks much brighter to bring down the bump strength even more. Make the tiny bump chips a bit larger. And I'll plug this background noise to layer 3 color of the bump channel. Turn it on. Blend mode to average. And bring opacity down a bit so it just adds a bit of a subtle variation to the whole thing. Maybe make the main bump noise even weaker. And break up the tiny bumps chips even more. I'll also make the roughness gradient a bit sharper and more stepped so we get more of a blotchy look to the specular channel. And lastly, I'll plug the main background noise to the coat weight channel using a ramp node and make it go from 15 to 70% gray. So you can see we added a very subtle coat layer. I'll just add a tiny bit of roughness like 0.1 and I'll bring down the IOR to something around 1.15. So the code layer is really only affecting the parts of the surface that isn't facing the camera, kind of like a subtle Fresnel reflection. I like to use the code layer as a way to add more complexity to the specular channel on more sophisticated materials like skin or SSS based stuff. But I saw MoGraph Plus using this code layer trick on a simple plastic material and I really liked it. So shout out to them for this. You probably already follow them, but if not, go show them some love. Anyway, yeah, that's it. The small but effective procedural powers of Redshift. Oh, don't you love it? Hope you learned something. If you want to know how to do this in Octane, check out the Octane version of this video I released a while ago. It's actually pretty old. I should update it because uh, I was using Cinema 4D noises there, and today you can use Octane's noises for the same effect. Anyway, go get the Terrazzo pack, go get some prints and pins, download this project file as a patron or member, because you know I wouldn't have been able to make these videos without the immense help of my patrons and members, all of which beautiful people's names you can see on the screen right now. Thank you all so much. I love you. Have a great day. Peace.